Hail and welcome back, everyone, to another random Heathen Ramblings podcast, Midgard Musings Production. My name's Jesse. Welcome back. Get into the zone here for another minute or two. Rock out to some some Donheim. Lothar Jarl, I think is the name of this track. Lothar Jarl. Off of the uh, Skopanir album released in 2020. Get some Night of the Roxbury action going on. Hell yeah. All right. Yeah, folks. Hail and welcome back. Um, thank you for tuning in today, as always, uh, to all of my listeners and viewers on YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, uh, iHeartRadio, hopefully more coming soon, but already, you know, nearly a dozen platforms where you can find and listen to your favorite podcast. And I hope that Random Heathen Ramblings is one of yours. And if you do like what I do, please consider uh, checking the show notes for my uh, link tree link that points you in the directions of all the ways that you can support this podcast. You can uh, become a channel member on YouTube. You can buy merchandise. You can uh, become a patron on Patreon. You can also offer listener support if you listen and watch uh, these, well, listen really, uh, to these podcasts through the Anchor platform, which is where I distribute all of my content. Uh, thanks to them and teaming up with Spotify. I now have the video option available to all of you. So if you're a Spotifyer, you're getting the video experience, same as the YouTube uh, community out here. So all of you that, that uh, continue to support this podcast, this very special hail and thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, for all you new folks and newcomers here, um, looking to, you know, support what I do. If you enjoy talks like this, uh, this is a random podcast of, of, of heathen related subjects. The, the, the topics can go into some really, uh, you know, we go down some rabbit holes sometimes <laughs> as the saying goes. And, um, but I usually, you know, we'll, we'll ramble on for about an hour or so with either a guest or just myself, depending on how the thing go. But, uh, here lately we've had some really awesome guests and today's guest is, uh, a fellow who I met actually right around the time that I started Midgard Musings, um, you know, social media and, and all that stuff several years ago. So, we're going to welcome in, welcoming, we are going to welcome him in, I'll get it out eventually, here in just a moment. Uh, so here, now in the meantime, let's get into the show deets. Let's go. All right, yeah. So uh, I said deets. Why did I say that? You know, I'm, not, I'm not trying. You're not trying to hook up here. Um, the details of the show <laughs> is what I really meant to say. Not like anyway. Um, it's Monday here now, recording this, and now you're getting it on Thursday. So hopefully by the time you know you guys are hearing this and listening to this, I've regained a few of my uh, brain cells. But um, it's been a rough weekend because I. I'm getting older and I uh, apparently twisted or, or, or sprained. Well, I did. I, I, I sprained my ankle by twisting or doing something in such a way that it didn't hurt me at all. When it happened, it took like almost full 24 hours for it to really start aggravating me. So basically from uh, Friday afternoon, Friday night, uh, all the way until today, um, I've been hobbling around. My ankle's swollen. It's trying to get around on crutches and it's just it's a rough rough go but um that's not what you're here for but that's the nature of the podcast you get random stuff like this from time to time that you know you just can't what are you gonna do not listen sure you can do that but you'll also miss the really awesome cool things um that 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 i have to offer you know um which is just a random podcast anyways guys Gals, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody out here on Midgard listening, streaming. Thank you so much. Um, like I said, the uh, the guest that we have coming in today 
his names is his name his names is uh, James. Uh, so we're going to welcome in James, and um, I'm going to hold the surname off for now, um, and uh, see how we go into introducing him when he joins us here in just a moment. Um, but he has been, uh, like I said, uh, a social media friend of mine. I don't, uh, you know, a lot of the guests that I have on this show have are, are actual friends in, in life, you know, real life friends that I know in person. And a lot of them are friends of mine who I've met uh, through social media. And James here is someone who I would consider fr a friend and, and friendly. Uh, but it's interesting um, the way our, our relationship kind of started out on the social media sites. We've never met in person. Um, but the way things started out when I first started, you know, Midgard Musings years ago, um, and, and what kind of heathen he is, um, I'm just going to leave that open for right now. And, and I want to hopefully talk about it and some other things with him. So let's stop delaying any further and, um, uh, welcome in James. So let's get him on. All right, folks. Uh, welcoming to the podcast today uh like i said this guy that I met some years ago on social media i've never actually met in person uh welcome to the show james hey what's up hey everybody i'm james davey i am uh i am a member of the white marsh uh we're still working on what we're what we're called now we used to be white marsh they had yeah uh, you're I've just in a, the marsh now right it's yeah, just <laughs> in the marsh man i've been a theodsman now for a little over 10 years um or a little under 10 years some period closely resembling a decade okay so you you come at least from a a, a place of experience if nothing else we can say you definitely got experience and uh when you talk when you start talking about practicing anything or doing anything for digits that you know equal to or or get into the decade or decades i'd say that you've got some miles under the tires and then have come from a place of being able to speak about something intelligently you know um which is you know man like you 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 hang out online you, you do the the online social media stuff that's how we met we're, we're gonna yeah. kind of dive into that a little bit and you see all kinds of oh man i just picked up you know uh the poetic edit and now let me you know start a youtube channel <laughs> i see or, a, a very lot of that yes yeah I mean, it's like, it's all over the place. Like you have really nothing to, and I, you know, when you and I first met, um, and this is going to be for some of the like alumni channel members, cause this is like on, on YouTube and, and, uh, Spotify and a bunch of other places. But for anybody who's been with what I do on Midgard Musings for like from the beginning, James here was right there, but in a different sort of way. <laughs> and the, the one thing that I don't think a lot of people know is uh unless you were there around back then at the time and and, and uh followed my videos and stuff is that i was going to get into doing like a, a, a book discussion series or, or my own personal ideas on what it means in a book that uh i recommend to a lot of newcomers to uh to heathenry to germanic heathenry is is we are our deeds by uh, eric wodening mm -hmm. um so i had like made this announcement or whatever like oh guys i'm gonna be reading from this book it's a great book i think it has a lot of great points but here's my here's what i think the guy's saying and um james is one of the guys who basically uh threw the roadblock up and was like pump the brakes there bub no you're not <laughs> and james you remember mm -hmm. that because i like what was what was so like, we've never really talked in depth about this except what the dialogue we went through back on back and forth and like messages and and comments on facebook status right. like, what was your initial take on when you saw that not knowing me from adam well so the thing about we are our deeds it's it's a great book uh and it's one of the uh you know it's, i i would i would almost say it's one of the required reading reading books for modern heathenry but there are a couple of things about it that make me immediately um immediately hesitant towards people who have just picked it up or have just picked up heathenry and then going and trying to share their thoughts on it. And the first of those things is that it, it is dated. You know, Wodening wrote this book um, uh, some time ago and uh, Deidish Belief, which is, you know, th that is one of the foundational texts of Deidish Belief, or not foundational, but one of the most important. Um, Deidish Belief has uh, evolved 
grandly since those ideas were written down. And there was talk uh, for a time of, of maybe convincing Eric to do uh, an, a, a second edition version of that book uh, just to sort of show everything that's been updated. So I always want to caution people when they see that book, like, yeah, this book has some great ideas in it, but some of those ideas have turned out through discoveries that have happened over the past 10 years, uh, 12 or 15 years, actually, to to have uh, not been accurate uh, linguistically. And then the other big thing that I always want to do when I see somebody who's using that book is um, we, my tribe, uh, Eric Wodening is is also White Marshinga. He is a member of White Marsh. Uh, and he... Which is why you really had the... the, the... Where, where you came from, the position where you came from is as a member of that yeah. tribe, you're, it was like, it was almost a call to action of like, hold up, what's going on here? Well, I mean, not necessarily a call to action, but the book has become so widespread in heathenry and we so frequently see people just take his ideas completely out of context, use mm. them totally wrong. And then that ends up flapping back on us because people are like, oh, so White Marsh believes this. Yeah. We always like to see if anybody's open to talking to us before, we're not going to tell you not to discuss a book. It's a book. You can do whatever you want. You're grown up. But what we will say is that if you have the opportunity to chat with us ahead of time, we'd love to answer questions about it just because we don't want uh, Eric to be misrepresented. We don't want White Marsh to be misrepresented. And we really want the ideas that are in this book to become prevalent in the human community. So we'd love to have discussions about those. That's wholesome, man. Like, I mean, that really kind of just without getting all mushy or whatever, you know, warms my heart to think that the information that is obviously out there for the public, right? I mean, anybody can get online and buy it. Um, and but that, you know, the source that it comes from is like willing to and wanting to and, and being receptive to uh, building some conversation around it. And I think that's really where the value of it shines is it, it's not like a, a how to guide on really right. anything it's like you know stuff to think about and, and incorporate into your practices and i'm you know i, I don't know a lot, a lot when i when i uh get on here and i talk to different heathens you know most of the folks that i talk to um actually i don't think i've talked to anyone that i'm aware of who uh claims thetish uh beliefs at least not to my knowledge but from my knowledge, like from from you and I, James, like when when I see like some of your social media posts and I go, hmm, here's a guy who's, you know, got, like I said before, miles under the tires and, and, and mileage to, to come from a position of I know what I'm talking about from experience and other things. You know, when you say something like Thetish belief is dying, I'm really curious as to what like where that comes from. And, and because, again, being being what little i know about it it's 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 a and then correct me again saxon heathenry or, mm -hmm. or anglo-saxon anglo-saxon yeah. right so let's i'd like to maybe like get into some of that if you don't sure if you don't sure sure so first I, I think that it's important uh, that what you're referencing is uh, is a post i made on my wall on my facebook wall i don't post much on facebook anymore but i posted something about I mean, a few months ago, uh, wherein I said, please don't ever call me a theodsman again. Mm -hmm. uh, I am White Mershinga. Uh, Thetish, Thetish belief is is dying or is dead um, to me. And specifically what I'm talking about is that for a very long time in Thetish belief, uh, the, the sort of necessary end of Thetish belief, if you think about what it is, which is these, these this collection of uh, five, six or seven different roughly analogous Anglo-Saxon tribes, but who have pretty significant differences in their ritual practice, in their liturgical practice, uh, pretty different understandings of the things that they believe. Um, basically, it was like it was like a league of these little these little mini tribes. Um, okay. I don't want to say mini tribes. Some of these things are, uh, you know, I know that Ethelond in Texas has like, I, I don't, I don't want to misrepresent, but I think they have like thirty or forty. They, they, these things are pretty big, but these little, these little mini tribes uh, of anywhere from ten to fifty um, heathens that are loosely connected in the way that they do things, but 
the necessary end to that is that those tribes are going to drift more and more apart in those practices. I mean, if if White Marsh is doing something where we believe we are liturgically correct and we are getting good results, and Ethelond is doing the same ritual in a different way and they got good results too, then we don't want to come together. We want to keep doing what our tribes are doing that is working for us. So you're going to get this natural drift away. So Theodish belief... Theodish belief, there, there was no single one my people's belief. It was it was a series of different little tribes, and this is, was true back in, in ancient heathenism as well. It really was villages, these yeah. big unit villages that would have their own practices, and they'd be sort of loosely connected to everybody else, but the village was where it started. And so um, we... Well, that, that's part of it. So one, the one half of it is that we feel like Theodish belief always is going to lead towards basically your tribe being your religion um got it hearth cults and, and all that yeah it's hard it's and not, even, even apart from hearth cult just that the bigger concept of the cultus your mm. cultus is going to be your religion and so i can say it's kind of the same way uh, if, if you'll excuse the analogy it's kind of the same way that when you say christian today nobody knows what the hell you're talking about because <laughs> Yeah, there's Pentecostal Catholics, and that, Pentecostals, yeah. there's uh, Unitarians, there's latter, you know, there's so many right. different branches, so many different uh, uh, belief systems. Isms. Yeah. Yeah. And so you kind of have this thing where it's like Christianity doesn't really have a real identity. And in the same way, theatrical belief, that term doesn't really have its own identity attached to it. Yeah, we're all Anglo Anglo-Saxon, which is not actually true because I know of two Frisian. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Yeah, and one continental Saxon. So actually, let me rewind and say we're all heathen, and that's about where it ends. Uh, we do tend to be obviously heavily reconstructionist focused. We do tend to use uh, a lot of old English rituals, but for the most part, every every theod was its own religion. Yeah, and let me just let me just clarify something because I think some if some people heard something that you said might raise some eyebrows, and I want to catch it while it's fresh. When you say mm -hmm. recon, reconstructionist focused, you mean yeah. focused on reconstructioning, not focused. Yeah, oh yeah, we're not focused. No, we're not. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. not focused. No, absolutely yeah. not. And and I do want to make that clear because yeah. a lot of people do think that about Danish belief. They see, well, you guys are these tiny little tribes and are exclusive exclusive to who can enter how are you not focused uh well first and foremost um there are no race requirements to be a heathen none of us think that no yeah there are no um gender requirements or sex requirements uh that's that's not uh, we are exclusive in that we say who or who cannot be in the club but what uh what ends up deciding that for us is really, you know, how much they impress us with their dedication to learning, how uh, how interested they really are in in being a part of this with us, and then we have a, a years long period where we get to observe them and make sure we trust them, and then they come into the club. But it's not like you, you can't be in our club because you're not the right skin color. We don't do that. No, and I knew that, but I just wanted to. Well, I was like, oh, "Wow, he just said something that if anybody's listening and can't respond yeah. in real time, like, what do you, what do you mean?" And then it's like everybody gets shut, like the whole thing just like gets shut down. I was like, "I know what you meant, and I know what you said." But I'm like, if in case you thought he said something, let's let's just clear that air right off and, the bat. And that's exactly. And so, so that's actually the other point that I was going to bring up. The other reason when I said, you know, that the Edish belief is dying, uh, is that the. <clears throat> Well, we, you know, we don't own the term Thetish belief, uh, and neither does the man who began, um, who began Thetish belief. He's still alive. Garmin Lord is, is still alive and well. Uh, and Garmin Lord uh, has decided for reasons that I don't care to speculate on that he is going to be uh, directly supportive of um, uh, the the I can't God what's the name of the the uh, the Eldricha. Um, the elder the Eldricha is absolutely full of Nazis. Um, they have had so much problem 
with, uh, let me rephrase that, that's, that's probably reactionary. They're absolutely full of racists uh, and they've had a ton of problems with their, their racist things that they've said. They are folkish. They're, they're, uh, you know, explicitly folkish. Uh, and Garmin Lord has decided that that is what the Yiddish belief is. And so we have decided that we're not going to fight over a term with him. It, uh, he's welcome to it. We are not part of that anymore. Uh, we were never knowingly a part of anything that would be construed as a racist, sexist, misogynist organization. We are much more open than that. Um, and I mean, I know that's why, why some of the Lords have decided to sort of part ways. I think some other Lords more or less are like, just, you don't get to tell me what to do. So, yeah. Well, so, and that's the thing about it, right? Like you're talking about how, how, uh, heavily focused, uh, you guys tend to be on reconstructionism and, and the focus on, uh, the Saxon side of, of heathenry, whether it be continental Germania or mm -hmm. Anglo-Saxon, right? Thade was the name was the old is the old, old English name for king right so Thadism or Thadish beliefs has this sort of and you can I mean again you're the you're the expert here as far as my understanding is it's like a a king kingdom monarch or a, a sacral patriarch. kingship yeah 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 thank you I'm right just, uh, like, so <laughs> so actually Thadish belief the term Thad uh, is is not from king it's from people people is Thad oh. Uh, so a, a, when you would say I am in a Thayid, you would be saying I am in a group of people. Uh, and so Thayidish belief, uh, or, or in Old English, uh, mein Thayidish Elefa, would be uh, my people's belief. Uh, but it is, a, a, I think, an astute observation that Thayid king and the Thayad people are related linguistically. Uh, and that's part of our religion is that uh, kingship cannot be removed from uh from divinity divinity was the original kingship those yeah. lords that King was created sacred. us um so hold on i think I, oh yep sorry uh so we believe in a line of what we call luck uh which is probably more uh, closely resembles fortune in the Greek sense. It is uh, the um, sort of lines of divine influence that come down from the gods themselves. And we believe that that has to flow in a direction, uh, usually through a leader of a people, be it a king, or as the Norse would have called it, a, a Gothi, the, the leader of the people. Um, or I guess Jarls too. Uh, but yeah, I see you, you sort of see my point here that we believe right. that there is a, a, a progression of power that comes down through the gods and through an, a, a mortal intercessor between the gods and the tribe. I feel that the uh, the term king or the term uh, the chieftain, the Gothi, whatever the whatever the, that that sacred role that 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 position, they're like the caretakers of the luck that you're yes. talking about. Yeah, they, yeah. they are. They are caretakers of it and so it is absolutely their responsibility to protect it and preserve it yeah. and to do the things that um maintain that luck right and they're not the just next the one that carries they're the, not just the protectors of the luck they are also the dispensers of the luck because yes because they act in that role as mortal intercessor between god and, and tribe it is their sacred and solemn duty to dispense that luck where it should go based on generally the you know the the worthiness of the person who is receiving it um and worthiness which, I'm, I'm sorry go ahead no i didn't want to uh interrupt you man i was just trying i think like which which goes back to what you were saying with uh when when like how you gatekeep or and, and that's what that's a horrible term i shouldn't you know but gatekeep but is you know how you protect that tribe's luck in in inviting new members is that worthing process that year of like probation or whatever like we got to make sure that you're that you're cut from the right jib and that you're doing the things that are going to add to the luck yeah 
yeah. that, that gets distributed and get like you were talking about, right? Uh, if for, well, I mean, I don't think gatekeeping is, is the wrong word. I mean, I, I think gatekeeping has obviously a very negative connotation. Yeah, yeah exactly. But, yeah. but really to, a certain, right. to a certain extent, I think that negative connotation may be deserved in this case. I mean, yes, the, the job of the chieftain or Gothi, or in our case, the, we, we have lords. Uh, mm -hmm. The job of the lord is to make sure that he's not letting Grendel enter the hall. And in, if Grendel gets in the hall, then it's nobody else's fault in that room besides the, the Lord of the hall who let him in. And so the Lord has to be very discerning to make sure that he's not inviting, not just a person who's going to burn everything down on the way out, but just a person who won't fit with the tribe. Because if the Lord invites this person who doesn't fit well with the tribe, nobody really likes him. He may be very smart, but he's just not getting along with anybody. The Lord loves him. He ends up getting through his worthing process and becoming a Theodsman. That man is my brother. No matter how I feel about him, he is a part of my tribe now. And so that can cause a lot of very, very uh, painful, destructive divisions. So yeah, the Lord is exclusionary. They had, uh, Theods are exclusive and they're exclusive because not because we're like we don't want you to be a part of our religion it's yeah. more like hey man there are 14 of us who meet relatively frequently and three of us just don't like talking to you yeah. and if we bring you in they're still not going to like talking to you and it's going to cause shit inside of our Theod yep. it's not because we're hateful it's not because we're uh, cruel or that we don't want other people to have what we have it's yeah. just because you're not a good fit. You, you might not be a good fit for our theater, you know, and so that is why we are as exclusive as we are. And I, you know what, you know, I think that um, this is an important thing to to discuss because in in the 21st century, in 2021, you know, and so much of this, you know, cancel culture, and you can't say this, you can't do that, you you know, you're such and such for 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 putting up these not guidelines, but like for saying the certain thing or for doing the certain thing. And, and, and just, I like the fact that what we talked about earlier is how accepting you are of everybody and anybody in that none, like religion, race, sex, gender, none of that matters, but what the, like, what value do you bring? What, what is your worth how, and, right. and how that process is done? And I see that more and more being looked at. Um, there's, there's not a lot of people that I think that, uh, that I know of at least that, um, don't see it see, see some value in that you know you sure. want to make sure that you're protecting those that are nearest and dearest to you and if you you know you let in like you say that grendel which for anyone not aware you know beowulf um read it <laughs> it's yeah it's like, foundational it's like, to heathenry you gotta yeah. read it because and why right because i mean we, we we see you know yes it's a saga but i mean it, we we see um the actual you know ritual of, of sumble being mm -hmm. executed we, we we learn so many fundamental working heathenry things being displayed in a saga yeah. right so uh, one of the things i do want to i do want to point out is that i think one of the things that that, that i have seen m a lot of newer heathens because we the, the game has changed when i came into heathenry especially online heathenry the, the every facebook page every uh, back it was before facebook but every social media page or every internet page you would see would be um they wouldn't even be talking about reconstruction it would be esoteric it would be out there you know with no real uh, arc, uh crew. <laughs> yeah a lot of that and so you know now that's kind of it's kind of the norm for most uh heathen spaces online to have at least some reconstruction and the more at least talk about the merits of reconstruction and and so the game has really changed from when i first started dipping my toes into online heathenry but uh one of the things that that's great in a lot of ways but in another way it's kind of bad and it's bad in that a lot of newer heathens are learning terms without really learning what they mean yeah. and sometimes those terms can sound a lot like things you think you know but they don't actually mean the same thing and so it's very important for me i see worth used very very wrong on most heathen spaces right now about honor what about frith those are some right, other ones. all of those things. All of those words are consistently misused because people don't understand that it, that uh, uh, Englishmen in 800 AD had a different understanding of that word than 
uh, than Gutenberg did when he made the printing press. So mm -hmm. like those words changed a lot in that time period. Um, and so when we say worth, when we say that a person is not or does not have worth to us, we are not saying that that person is not a valuable human being. Worth does not mean value. So if you will, you will, you will, I will say constantly, but you will frequently hear Deidish people say things like, I don't care what that dude says, he's worthless. And if you're outside of our spheres, then your first thought is what we're saying is that person, we are, we are saying that person has no value, is subhuman, is not, you know, is awful. Yeah. We're not saying that. We, that person is completely valuable. They are valuable to society and to their family, but they do not have worth to us, worth in the old English sense of it, meaning they have not gone through any ordeal with us whatsoever. We don't trust them. We don't know them. Yes, they're somebody, but they have no worth to us. Um, I'm glad you so said, I'm glad you said, I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm yeah. glad you said that not having gone through an ordeal. I'll right. come back to that in a minute, but yeah. go ahead and continue. Well, so, and we have a saying uh, in White Marsh, worthing is ordeal. And I, that might not just be a White Marsh saying, it might be a, a, a greater theater saying, but when we say worthing is ordeal, first of all, the worthing process, a, a thrall does not come into theatish belief valueless. They come in worthless, and we call them worthless thrall. Again, because they have not gone through or deal with us, they have not established trust and lines of communication with us. So they are valuable people, but they're worthless to us. Uh, and so they have to go through, if a person tries to join White Marsh, uh, and they are accepted into our, work, we'll call it our uh, uh, work study trainee program, aka uh, thraldom. Um, uh, if they are accepted into thraldom, then they have a year and a day period where they go through or deal with us. They talk with us when we get together at, uh, at an event, they are going to wash the dishes. They are going to carry the trash outside. They're going to do all the grunt work, uh, for that year, if they're capable of it, if you know, if they're physically fit enough to do those things, if not, we're just going to make them read a bunch of stuff. And that's also ordeal. But ordeal is going through stuff together as a people, even if it is as simple as making a meal and carrying the, the trash out. It is that ordeal. It is that that time of learning one another and going through stuff together that builds worth between people. And I get long winded, so please cut me off. <laughs> No, no, I'm, I'm glad you're going into this because um, going back to what I said earlier about the whole ordeal thing, your phrase that, that you're the White Marsh, um, you say is coined or whatever, what I've heard, ordeal breeds worth. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just, and, you know. and, and some of the things that you're talking about, because like, let's, let's, let's kind of like try to take like a, an outsider's or third party's perspective. It's like, oh, you're probating. You know, oh, you want me to be the kitchen bitch. You want me to do this. You want me to do that. You want me to do all these stupid little things. Yes, but there's a purpose behind it, which is going to touch on a topic that I talked about last week with another guest of mine on last week's podcast about the differences of intent and purpose. The, in, the intent with what you're talking about is to build that trust. The purpose is because, again, go, goes back to the whole luck thing and that you are you are you are you are becoming part of a web. Your 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 threads of weird are, are being tied together now at that point so it's not just what you do you're now doing things that are going to affect the people around you your brethren your folk your tribe whatever and that's why you're doing it. that's the purpose behind you're doing it. and that's what's going to determine your worth which is placed upon you by the people right your worth is yeah. determined and, and placed upon you by the people yeah through ordeal and then when the big things hit you know when family members die or when a house just you know becomes de uh, decrepit or you have to you know dig out a well or you have to do these things those trivial seemingly trivial things at the beginning of that thraldom right when you're doing all that probating as it were teaches those values teaches those perspectives teaches that worldview in a way and makes you appreciate and understand now when the bigger things hit your 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 folk are there your theta is there your your yeah. people are there I, I really actually like the 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 analogy of probating like probating into an mc yeah, exactly. Or, or, or uh, basic training in the in the military. I mean, yeah, you, you 
basic training in the military, what do you do? You learn how to be a soldier. What do you do during thraldom? You learn how to be a, a, a theodsman. And, you know, what is the downside of being in basic training? Yeah, I mean, they're going to make you do KP. They're going to make you mop the floors. All the shit they don't want to do, they're going to make you do it. And, you know, in thraldom, that, that tradition is alive and well. But I, it's also a situation where, like, if, if a person were to come in and they were physically disabled in a way where they couldn't do the physical grunt work, we, you know, it, it is not a prerequisite. We're not telling a person yeah. with asthma, you have to do this or you can't be a theodsman. It's just sort of, it's a tradition. And I'm lazy, man. I'm 43 years old. And if I have a thrall who wants to be in my tribe and I don't want to walk in the other room and get myself a beer, I mean, come on. Yeah, like, yeah, right. man. You, you. <laughs> Prove to me that you deserve to be my man. Go get me a beer. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and and they do over that period of time, these people, I, I have been a thrall and I have, uh, I have raised a thrall and I have been around many thralls. And the thing is, uh, I guess we, we go for the term Thaoa now because it has less negative connotations, but I have been around many Thaoa and what I have found is that these people come in and you don't know them from Adam. You may have had some interaction with them online. You may have met them at one or two heathen events, but you don't really know them most of the time. And a year and a day later, you would die for these people. They're your best friends. It is like, I think about the people who went through thraldom with me in White Marsh and there's nothing that I wouldn't do. Now, one of them I came in with, he was my friend long before that, but another, I had only ever seen her online. I'd never met her before. I'm talking about my sister, Ashley. I don't know if she listens, but if she does, what's up, Ashley? I love you. Um, oh, yeah. I would a thousand percent die for any member of Ashley's family now. And that is that, that is worth. That's what worth means. Yes. You know, it's not about value. It's about what I'm willing to put on the line for that other person. And when I tell you about it, like one of the things that makes me so sad about, about, you know, regular heathen groups, I say regular heathen groups, I mean, like heathen groups where they meet like, you know, ever so often, but they don't really talk and they're not really friends. And Catherine let that one weirdo in and we don't like him. Like, yeah. It's so sad to me because they don't have what I've got. And what I have is that I, if I get like, I haven't been able to do ritual with White Marsh now for the whole pandemic. And I feel like there is something physically missing from my body. Dude. And I will not feel whole again until I do my rituals with my people. And I am sad that more groups don't have that. Man, that, that right there, what you just said, man, hit in a way that I can't. I can't put into words like <clears throat> similarly like our tribe which is a, uh, when i say tribe i don't mean like oh you got about 15 20 people it's like it's i can count on one hand like the amount of people that are my tribe and the last thing that we did ritually was um sigurd blow we didn't even get the chance to get together for for uh Vetranet, the winter nights yeah. uh, this past couple of weeks ago you know um, which I know, like, for a lot of historical uh, Germanic heathens, you know, depending on if your, you know, focus is, like, the Scandinavian or or mainland Germania, like, a lot of it falls close. Like, the months, the moons are, are called something different. But, you know, for us, like, Winter Nights was a big deal. We had a big yeah. Freyr thing last year, and we, you know, we, we, it was great because we, 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 we formulated a quote wicker man. And I say wicker man with a very loose air quotes going on here, but it was basically just a stick figure sticks that we gathered with our hands, bundles of, of kindling that we gathered with our hands. We, we wrapped them with twine. And then because it was a frere bloat or, you know, like it was for frere for, for winter nights, we, we found, you know, those big, uh, they're not crap. What are they? They're not crab apples, but they look, they look they're like the size of softballs, big green gnarly things. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, we like we, we we got a big old branch and, and we, we tied it off at like the waist of the wicker man and like tied in the the, the two, you know, honads there. You know what I'm talking about? So you get yeah, it, it's, it's prayer, you know, so right. Big, you know, and so like that was our thing last last year. We didn't get to do it this year. Yeah. Um, pandemic aside, but it actually turned into a, a thing where it was like one of our tribe members um, got the got got the big, you know, COVID-19 old thing, damn thing, yeah. you know, so, I, it, you know, 
I, I hear what you say and I'm like, I feel that. And, and that you can't replicate online. You don't have Frith online, people. You don't. You don't it's, have, it's, you have an illusion of it. You have a, some yeah. like basic I mean, understanding or sense of it from, because let's face it, dude, you've now never met in person, right. but we, we've shot enough of the shit together. And I think we understand at least on a loose level about each other where it's like, we get a, a loose understanding of what Frith means from that, but we don't really right. get it without tying that weird or, 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 or exchanging those worth type moments. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah, can't do yeah. that online. It has to be in person. And yeah. And like, so or, I, I or, know that the, one of the things about data belief that I think we're really, we're really known for, uh, unfortunately, is that years and years ago, um, running into a theodsman online could be a very dicey proposition because we're assholes. Uh, we <laughs> are, uh, I can cuss, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, we can be very brusque. We can be very irritable. We're much like a badger in that we will come out of our holes, cut you apart with our claws and go away. And so we, we've rubbed a lot of people, a lot of wrong ways over the years. And, you know, I would love to sit here and tell you that there's a great excuse for that. There, there isn't. Um, we were irritated. Are you all Scorpios or, or I mean, or like, what is I mean, it? not, I'm a Scorpio, not, not none of us. Oh <laughs> yeah, dude. Scorpio uh, power, man. There like, you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, like, but I was actually, me, a, that's my go -thee? Like, no, man, it's. So I was a part of the original, do, do you even heathen bro? Um, and <laughs> I, I was there for all of it. I mean, not for all of it. I was there for most of it. And, uh, it's actually why I'm Thaddeus now, believe it or not, but <laughs> But we, 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 we hurt people. I mean, you know, now that we are starting to understand uh, the, the real world ramifications of social media better, you know, 10 years yeah. on, we're starting to realize these things that we did, we thought they were funny. We thought they didn't have a real world repercussion. They did. We hurt people's feelings. We made people doubt themselves. We made people feel bad about themselves in ways that I know that some of my uh, Theodish fellows will hear me saying this and be like, fuck that. I don't care. But <laughs> that we do. We do care. I care. Um, and yeah. so you have noticed, I think, probably over the past four or five years, we've really softened our tone online it's the, the the knob's been dialed down a bit are you in the the uh the also true academic heathenry group they they recently changed their group name it's a, it's a facebook group it, it used to just be plain old also true oh yeah yeah sense. i used to be uh no i left i used to i was one okay. of the admins of that for god i was an admin of that for like eight years and recently doesn't surprise me yeah recently i just uh i, I got in an argument with one of the other uh mods and i was like I mean, I could like this dude up. I could kick him off the mod team. But the truth is, I don't really like being here. So <laughs> I'm just going to bail. Yeah, no, but I mean, like the, the, the overall tone of, of that group at one time, like it's it's been dialed back down a bit. And even I can say, man, like I, I uh, going back to like what we first talked about was how we met, right? Yeah. Because I was about to talk about we are our deeds and it was like pump the brake, you know, pump the brakes, dude. Like, let's talk about this first or you really have no business. I appreciated that, but I also recognized, right, <clears throat> that had I um, not been gone through the ordeals that I'd gone through in my life, experienced things that I had up to that point outside of heathenry, I would have been like, well, excuse me, but who do you think you are? I'll run my Facebook the way I want to, and been all like butthurt about it. But instead, I was like, well, let me hear what this guy's got to say. And because of that, We've not lost connection, you know what I mean? Like, you've not, like, banned me from your Facebook friends. I've not banned you from mine, you know what right. I mean? And, and we still, like, even though we don't talk regularly, it's like, here we are now, all these years later, you know, gnawing the fat, chewing the cud, whatever you want to call it, about heathenry type stuff. And it's yeah. like, hey, guys, you know, don't, 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 don't take it so personal all the time. Like, words are just words. Like, you, you can do, here's the cool thing. If you don't like it, you can ignore it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, well, like so you don't have to say anything if you really, you know what I mean. Like if it's just yeah. try to prove. Well, what point. I would say to you to a certain extent is like sometimes you get your feelings hurt, and if you get your feelings hurt, then that's okay, and it and it is perfectly acceptable yeah. to say to someone online, "Hey, man, 
you know, tone it down. Please don't talk to me that way. Um, but but you, I would I caution against just throwing what they're telling you out the window because they were mean to you about it. Because sometimes people are mean to you about it because it's the ninth time today they've had to explain the same thing to a newbie and they're just irritated. And they yeah. actually do know what they're talking about. Um, and, and I will tell you a story because one of the things I liked about you in the early days is you told me your story and it reminded me so much of, of how I got where I am. Uh, and, and I see you sort of following that same trajectory. And w what happened with me is I just come back from Iraq. Uh, I had, so I was Asa True when I was 14, I think. From the time I was 14 until the time I was probably 21. Uh, and I was a member of a, a very a very large um, Asa True kindred in uh, Eastern Georgia that ended up falling apart. But I went back to Catholicism uh, while I was in the army, because uh, oh, the, 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 like, the pagan version that doesn't want to be pagan, or that doesn't want to admit right, the pagan. Right. <laughs> uh, I went back because uh, there weren't a lot of uh, Asatru priests hanging out in Iraq, and I was getting shot at a lot. So I was like, I need a God to talk to stat. Uh, right. You know, it, it was it was an anxiety response. But I went back to Catholicism. And when I got out of the army, I was like, what was I thinking? That was never what I wanted and I started transitioning back into heathenry but I accepted at that time that I didn't really know anything um I had not I had been a kid when I was at Asatru before and I was I, I wasn't great at it but every time I would go to a, a and this this was uh the early-ish days of Facebook every time I would go to a Facebook group and be like hey I'm pretty new to this I want somebody to talk to you about it it wouldn't be people being like we don't want to talk to you it would be just straight up Nazis being like, yeah, man, you know, what's great about our religion, Hitler. And you're like, whoa, what the fuck, man? This is not, this is not yeah. what I sign on for, dude. All right. Yeah. And so I started this scratch, you know, I didn't know uh, uh, heathens united against uh, racism was already a thing, but I didn't know about it at the time. Yeah. So I just created this little Facebook group called, uh, uh, as a truce against racism or something i don't remember something like that and i got like yeah you know, three or four hundred people join it and we were having little discussions and then a member of who are did find out about us and and sort of brought us into the fold a little bit and one day he was like hey i just want to let you know some people have targeted you for harassment and i'm like really because nobody's bothered me is it really harassing me if they're not talking to me right uh, but he was like, it's this group. And he tagged me to do you even heathen, bro. Uh, and they'd been about around for about three months and maybe, maybe more than that. It may have been like my uh, six months to a year. Uh, but, but I joined them and I was like, Hey, what's up guys? You want to fucking fight? And, <laughs> and they were just like, whatever kid, get, get who, who the fuck cares? You're just another dumbass. Who, Cause do you even a heathen bro was an open group. You could see what was posted and they would not stop you if you wanted to join and talk to them. Yeah. And so I was just another like idiot. The Wild West. Yeah, and I was just another like I was an idiot, but another newbie who wanted more and yeah. didn't know where to find it. And I wanted to pick a fight with these dudes. And so I thought I was going to be real smart and be like, "Oh yeah, well, what about this concept?" And they were like, "Look, if you really want to know, here's where to go find out about it. If you can't do that shit, then don't bother us." So I'm like, "I'm going to go and I'm going to read that book and I'm going to prove these motherfuckers wrong." And I went and read that book and I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> I think I might have been wrong." So I went back to the group like four or five days later. And I'm like, "Hey guys, y'all still suck, but..." could you explain this thing a little bit better? Cause it sounds like what you were talking about. <laughs> and then just over the course of about four or five months of doing this with these guys, they're still, they were still gruff. They were still rude, but I, they would also be like, look, man, you're trying to learn. So we're going to help you. And I learned so much more about heathenry and those four or five months than I had learned in 20 years before. And they were pointing, and it wasn't just dudes telling me what they believed. They were pointing me towards these resources. They were cross-checking with these resources. And I was going and I was doing the work and reading it. And uh, one of the primary members of Do You Even Heathen Bro was Brian Smith, who is the Lord of White Marsh. And so after about three years of bashing my head against this, I I asked to uh, to be bought in and 
here I am. So if I had just been like, fuck these dudes and given up and thrown away all the stuff that I could tell that they were saying made sense just because they were mean to me, then I wouldn't be here. I would not have the, I would have probably gone back to Catholicism at some point. Yeah because I wasn't finding the meaning that I was looking for, but because I was able to sort of, I don't want to say I have a thick skin. I don't, they fucking hurt my feelings, man. <laughs> well, yeah, look like, you know, you can be all bro, whatever macho, you know, Hulk Hogan, anything like you can, you can put up any kind of facade that you want, but like point, point, like case in point, I'll say, you know, when, when, when you came to me, I was like, okay, what you know like i mean i was like you know get my feathers ruffled a little bit i was like you know right i did uh, you know and then like the delivery of it i was like well but again like i had had experiences in my life before i was like i'm used to getting this sort of treatment because what does it do it it challenges your um your ego yeah. it really does you it know does. what i mean like it really yeah. freaking does man um and and you're not always right you're not and you know what? Sometimes you got to be put in your place and you got to be checked. And that's part of learning. That's part of growth. That's part of living. And that's part of life. And, well, so, and, and I would, that would be my advice to the newer heathen coming in is that they have to be willing to take a few licks from time to time. But, I, but I also want to say on the flip side, to, I, I want to give a piece of advice to fellows like you who are tilting past that edge now, who have tilted towards being the people that the newbies come to come to you know what i'm saying like you you're not you're definitely not a newbie and you're not a nobody there are people who come to you my advice to people like you and to elder heathens is you don't have to be a dick about it and you know i i understand i get irritated too and i have been a dick to people online but i look back on that and i regret it and i think that you will too you know, if you yeah. don't feel like talking to the person, don't talk to them. You don't, like you said, you don't have to respond to everything. Yeah. So if somebody comes in and says something that you know is absolutely wrong, you have two choices. You can either let them be wrong or you can try to help them. We don't need to be dicks. Right. And and if you're going to take that plunge and you're going to like put yourself out there as the like, I'm willing to help approach or I'm, I'm willing to like insert myself into that. I like I I've I've chosen to withdraw so many times because I'm like I'm not ready to get into the depths that this is about to go. It's like I and you got to pick those kind of I say pick those battles but like you got to be picky and choosy about it cuz and cuz it does. It's it's like you're going to say something, you're going to you're going to plant that seed and it's like now are you ready to water that tree? Right. You know, are, are you are you in a, in that position? Are you ready to at least be that sort of, you know, influence that that continues to nurture because yeah. you, you plant the seed and you can be like, I'm not saying don't be brusque about it. I, you know, that's fine, because sometimes you got to know that the guy that you're talking to, like with you, if I had a comment, I'd have been like, hey, buddy, like, maybe don't you like you would have blown me completely off. You'd pay me no attention, yeah. but sort of coming at you with like, hey, look, you should probably talk to me before you go do that, because you're going to you're going to step in some shit. You know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, you could have easily turned me away. And you know what? If you had it's really no skin off my back, but I didn't have to approach you that way. And look, to, to people out there, they're going to be people. I've seen your, num your, your numbers. There are going to be people in your audience that I have been a dick to online. Um, I'm James Davey. It was me. Uh, and you'll notice I haven't done it in, in a couple of years now uh, because I started implementing a rule. Uh, and the rule was before I hit send, type it out, man. Type it out to your heart's fucking content. Write a novel if you want to, but don't hit send before you answer this simple question to yourself. Is it, is it possible when I hit send that I'm going to change this person's mind? Now, there are a bunch of reasons why you're not going to be able to change somebody's mind. One is they're too sold in. They are sold in on being, uh, on believing what they believe. There's no way to talk them out of it. So then there's no reason to hit send because all you're doing at that point is stroking your own ego. They're not going to change their mind. The other thing is if you wrote that in such a way where a reasonable person would read it and be like, fuck this dude, I will never believe what he believes, you're still not going to change their mind. Don't hit send. So if you read that and you think this person has a reasonable chance of having their mind changed and I've approached them in a way where I think it might work, then hit send. 
And I learned that I hit send about 95% less often than I did before. Yeah. And honestly, man, my blood pressure has gone down. I'm not as angry about things anymore. Nobody yeah. is any more right or less wrong on the internet. So, you know, let it, if you're a new guy and an older, uh, if you're a new heathen and an older heathen's kind of brusque with you online, brush it off your shoulders, pick up the knowledge that you can. If you're an old heathen and you want to be mean to somebody online, just, just don't like, just don't. Yeah. No, and I, you know, I, I, I credit or I give credit where credit's due, man. And I appreciate that. I appreciate it from both ways, you know, because again, at the time when you and I first met, like, again, you were, it was probably one of those times in your life, I think that was, you were just kind of that way yeah. <laughs> pretty much everybody. And I, and I, and I just so happened to choose to not let it get to me to the point where I wasn't willing to learn. Cause I'm like, who the hell am I to not be able to learn from anybody? Because what is it? Is it, I mean, it's it, Banda Manga Saga. I mean, wisdom is wisdom wherever it comes from. And, uh, and I, I said Banda Manda. That that sounds like some hooga booga. Like I like I didn't say it right. <laughs> I'm not gonna even try. I don't I, speak Norse. <laughs> but you know, I'll call the, one of my know, Icelandic that. friends. Have him say it. Banda Manga Saga or something like that. It's 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 one of those things that, that wisdom is wisdom uh, from wherever it comes. And you know, one of the commonalities, and we'll we'll wrap it up here soon because I know we're getting probably two time or past it. But uh, is you know Odin. Uh, whether it's Odin, Wodan, uh, you know, wisdom is 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 what you're you're looking for, and it and it comes from wherever, it comes from places that you may not expect, and it comes from sources that you may not necessarily think that that has any value to or, or whatever yeah. at the moment. And I, you know, <clears throat> we are in such the di uh, the digital and technology age where so much of this stuff gets. I mean, this is this right here is going out on almost a dozen platforms. You know, this is the world that we live in. We don't live in the world of, you know, 800, 1,000, whatever more years ago when, you know, people were riding on horseback and delivering messages because, like, it, it, it's a different time. Yeah, absolutely. And some of the stuff, you know, that we talked about earlier, you, you were mentioning, and this is almost like stuff for another podcast, even if you're ever willing or wanting to come back on. But, like, we were talking earlier about, some of the things in, in we are our deeds like that was honestly one of the most influential pieces of, of written work that helped shape me or, 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 or helped me adopt a worldview that has shaped me into the person that I'm in today. Yep. Like it was it was it was a start of things for me to to, to pursue and learn about. It was the very uh, first book that do you any, do you even heathen, heathen bro threw at me and for anybody who hasn't read it, I'm obviously going to shill it because if you buy it through Lulu, uh, you you it, we own it, so you'll be you'll link be paying, in the description. <laughs> you'll be Show paying notes. The, uh, you'll there. be paying into the White Marsh coffers. Uh, but that said, um, <clears throat> I recommend it because it is the easiest. Like you could go read Culture of the Teutons, but I'm going to ask you for your own sake to bring a two by four to smash yourself in the head with ever so often. I still haven't read it. It is. It, I, I don't recommend my new thralls read it because the price of lumber is so high. Right, so you're gonna go through so many two by fours. Uh, I, my new, uh, my thralls. I've always uh, uh, just pulled out specific chapters because also, uh, uh, you know, culture of the two tons is like a hundred years old. It it hasn't held up. Parts of it have, other parts haven't. Um, but you know, if you go and you read culture of the two tons, you are going to be crossing your eyes trying to read it. If you go and read, um, really any of the the other big reconstruction texts you're you're gonna have trouble you're gonna be struggling you're gonna be drooling trying to keep your damn eyes open but we are our deeds is like 120 pages it is um and that's big font yeah. and it is simple to read it does introduce a bunch of concepts that are in old english but it does it in a very accessible way and so i always recommend it to new heathens because the concepts are well laid out in a way that you won't want to kill yourself reading yeah like i'm just going to try to like hold up a book here for for scale if it'll even show like we are our deeds is half of that yeah half that in, in, in terms of thickness you know what I'm saying? So like when we talk about like, and this is this is a, a, a study version of the Poetic Edda, which has a bunch of myths and sagas contained in it. So 
when we talk about like reading material, oh, I'm not that big of a reader. You don't have to be. You don't have like, to be. You, you could literally finish this in on a, on a Friday night if you wanted to like power read through it. And if you, you really want to sit down and tear it apart and take notes, I mean, you could do it over the course of a week. In a weekend. Yeah. yeah I mean, easily. Easily. Yeah. yeah. So, so I recommend it. I highly, highly recommend it. It's going to introduce, but I also recommend, like I said earlier, keeping in mind that it also, things change and grow and evolve. And, you know, one of the oldest, bizarrest criticisms that they had belief, people used to accuse us of being very dogmatic and we never change. Man, we change all the time. We change constantly. Um, we've changed so much since those books were written that if we wrote them today, they probably would be as big <laughs> as these other texts because we've We've How learned a lot. Summarize, yeah. Right, right. We've learned a lot, but we've also, you know, our our, our th thoughts and theories have changed since then. Um, but it is still, even with that said, you know, grain of salt. But it is still foundational for understanding concepts like the the inner yard, the outer yard, and what that actually means. Because a lot of people don't really get what that means. Um, yeah. And what it means to, you know, they talk about frith quite a lot and luck quite a lot. And so it is, it is a really, really strong book for the beginner. Yeah. Yeah. I highly, I, I mean, I still, I, I recommend it. Like when people are like, Oh, what, I'm, I'm new to this. What should I, you know, what should I read? And, and then like, for some reason, you know, like the first thing, like, and I don't know, like, I'm just going to ask as we wrap this up, like the first thing that a lot of the, like the Norse uh, heathens are like, Oh, what's, what, what's the first things I should, Oh, you should get the poetic edda. Is there an equivalent to that in in, in Anglo-Saxon? Do does like everybody just say, "Hey, read the Halion," like that's your go-to thing? Well, that was I'm, so not really. I mean, I guess Beowulf obviously is the sort yeah. of the Anglo-Saxon heathen text. There's a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of what we know it comes from uh, the words of uh, Bede, who wrote about, yeah. you know, but he wrote after the end of heathendom. Um, but yeah, Beowulf definitely. But you will never hear, I think, any flavor of Anglo-Saxon heathen, be they Forn Sid or be they Theodish or, or, or White Marsh, any of us. Um, we're not going to be like, well, the first thing you should do is go read Beowulf. That'll tell you everything. And that's the yeah. thing is like the poetic no eddas. Right. And the poetic eddas also are not like they are a great source of ideas and understanding about the time in which they were written. But they are not uh, a, an instruction manual for how to be heathen, and, no. and you know, so it's very important for us that the first thing that we your, will normally tell you to read when you come in, we, we'll tell you like Beowulf is fine, but you're probably going to want to read that last because if you don't understand the foundational concepts going in, you're just going to get confused. So we'll probably we usually probably have them read We Are Deeds first, and then we'll have them read Like a Toe, um, uh, uh, Household Spirits. We'll have them read, uh, you know, we've got a bunch of we'll have, uh, Road to Hell by um, H. Yeah. Red. Fantastic. Yes. I know that I read that in, in uh, Theo, uh, Theodem. Um, yeah, any any sort of like, and that's that's a big topic of like, you know, death in the afterlife. Like you want to understand anything about the concepts of that. The road to hell is, is like critical reading. Absolutely critical. Um, it's, it's again, though, you know, bring a two by four. It's well, it, again, it, it, it's like it's not your introductory level stuff like. And I mentioned the Halion before, but I'm like, is that that's even a weird one because it's it's the gospel mm -hmm. or it's it's gospel, but it's like Christ is 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 a is a is a a, 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 a Dreyton or Thrustin yeah. or whatever. Like he's a war chief <laughs> and the disciples, the apostles are his thanes, you know? Yeah. And that's a read, uh, read, uh, it's, it's, it's outdated, but there was a, a book for a while that I really liked called the Germanization of early medieval Christianity. Uh, and again, it is, it is, it is somewhat outdated at this point, but it talks specifically about that yet yeah, how in early England, Christianity, the way that they got people to convert was literally they just, they just painted Christianity on top of uh, on heathen family structure and, and, and they had structure. So yes, uh, uh, Jesus was a sacral king. And that was why you followed him. And so everybody's like, well, yeah, you got to follow him. He's a sacral king. Of course, you have to follow him. He's a sacral king. That's what you do. And so, uh, <laughs> and, and that's actually there's a there's a whole uh, I, I cannot remember the name of this paper. I am so sorry. If you Google it, you'll probably find it. But it discusses how Jesus was a warrior king to early medieval English people. Yeah, and right. that has translated directly into the sort of 
um, almost militant Christianity that we have today, whereas Christianity was very much soldiers a religion of, of peace. Christ, soldiers, soldiers of, of Christ, God. all of that came from mm. the the uh, the Christian uh, the sorry the Christianization of England and Saxony, because yeah. as it turns out, we're a warlike people. Wow! Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that, man, you know what, we could go on forever about this. And I feel like this is probably a great point to like, just say thanks yeah, <laughs> to everyone thank listening and watching and stuff like that, because I feel like this could become a three hour long podcast if we wanted to. Maybe we have you back and we talk about some of these other neat things. But um, yeah, sure. Yeah, though, this was this was really intriguing and 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 really fun. And I would I you know, so I'm going to ask the the uh, the audience. Um There'll be a poll that I want you guys to check out. And if you want James here to, to come back and let's talk about some more, uh, more of these types of things, you know, would love to, to, to see your feedback about it. Um, but, but for now, I, I, I think that this is a great um, kind of like point to just say, let's, let's just, just hit the buzzer, you know, let's just tap let's out. Eject. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll touch base with you here in just a second, James. So don't like drop from me here, but for everybody that's listening, watching, um and joining the, the premiere today on youtube thank you so much i hope you guys enjoyed it if you do don't forget to you know upvote the video or upvote the podcast on whatever platform it is that you're streaming watching listening tuning in from uh, be sure to, to upvote it and engage in that sort of way it helps get stuff like this out to more people share comment subscribe whatever it is that the platform that you're uh, absorbing this on calls for you to do we urge you to, to please do it. Don't forget to check the show notes or description for the ways that you can support not just Midgard Musings. Um, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a Midgard Musings production. So the support the podcast, support what I do. Um, you know, all that funky stuff that I got to say. But uh, thank you, James, for being here today. Um, thank you, man. And uh, to everybody who participates in that poll, don't worry. It's not going to hurt my feelings. You can downvote me all day long. <laughs> we're gonna do what we're gonna do anyway you know that's what? right the people will be like we don't want him back and i'm like yeah but i do and i run this thing. <laughs> so um you, you can you can be here if you want to or not but no seriously your your opinions matter your thoughts are are are, are very much appreciated so share them below or over here there where i don't know where the hell ever it shows up but anyway you guys are awesome thank you so much um hail to you all uh stay safe out there stay healthy uh may your hearth fires always continue to burn bright and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.